So we're going to return today to the Spaywood presentation, focusing in particular on porcine factor eight, and then turn to the last of our company presentations in the, the current stage, which is on Alpha, Abbott, and Griffles. Before I go to porcine factor eight with Spaywood, I would like to just return to one point uh, about Spaywood's licensing uh, and importation of the product Humanate. Uh, and you will remember, sir, that Humanate was Coate in a rebranded bottle that Spaywood imported, having ceased to have a, an agreement directly with Cutter. Uh, in January 1981, as we saw, the Committee on the Safety of Medicines uh, had advised that the product license be varied because of concerns about tracing the origin of the product back to the manufacturer and indeed back to the donors. Uh, you will also recall, sir, that the accountant's report that we looked at said that Spaywood continued to sell Humanate until June 1981. And there was that difference between January and, and June that we couldn't explain. Uh, with thanks to Mr. Evans, a document throws a little further light on this. Could we have on screen, please, Shumik? MHRA 5049. This uh, is the, a, a document taken from the NIBSC archives showing what was done with batches of Humanate that were received. We can see the top entry is for batch number 4802. Um, it is stated that a protocol and samples were received on the 31st of October 1980. And the, the um, fifth column along says that there were at four times 270 units of product that were provided. The next column says date substance released, uh, and it's either the, the 13th or the 23rd of December 1980. The next entry for batch number 2805 shows that the samples were received on the 21st of January 1981, which is around the time of the CSM meeting. Uh, two times 520 international units. The date of the substance released uh, says, has brackets around it saying 20th of March 1981, and the comments are release not recommended. An interpretation of this document is that the first batch that's listed there was released in December 1980 and obviously was available for sale from Spaywood after December 1980. And it may be that that batch was still being sold as of June 1981, uh, and that the next, uh, the next batch received was not released. Uh, and the brackets may indicate perhaps that it was returned to the, uh, to the importer. Uh, we don't know, but that may explain why there is this gap between uh, January 1981 of the CSM meeting and June 1981, the point at which the last uh, part well, of human aid was sold. Uh, on the face of it, uh, one would expect the batch release system to operate in advance. Uh, the, plainly, that, that appears to be the case. The samples uh, and the protocol are received in respect to 4802 in October, uh, and it's released... Uh, three months later, in effect, at the end of December, 23rd of, of December. Uh, I, I read that certainly as a two, not a one. Uh, and they, uh, there is a three-month in, three interval, um, November, December, January, before 2805 goes for its uh, protocol. That's the next batch. So presumably a batch covers a, a good three months' supply. Uh, and the only question then is when that batch starts to be sold, because presumably by the time it's released, there is still sufficient in, uh, in the stores, which has been cleared uh, to cover a, 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 a few weeks' supply. Um, you wouldn't expect just-in-time management in those days, in the same way as you might today. Uh, so it's perfectly conceivable that it would have, it's likely it would have gone on beyond the end of March, 
uh, supply for a, a short while. That would fit with the information you gave me uh, last week. It would, sir, yes. Well, at the moment, uh, th those are the inferences which uh, occur to me. I, I, I obviously listen in due course to anyone who may want to take a different view. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I will move with that to Porcine, factor eight. We heard a little about this on Friday, um, and we asked some questions of Ms Middleton uh, about Porcine Factor 8. Her, her involvement in the product was limited, as we know, uh, but we do have quite a lot of documentary evidence about it. We know that from its establishment in 1973, Spaywood Laboratories had investigated the development of Animal Factor 8 for the treatment of haemophilia patients with high inhibitor levels. There was initially work done on, on bovine and porcine factor eight, but increasingly the porcine factor eight became the, the, the better route that was being explored. Uh, the initial product rights and, and basic know-how were purchased from a firm called Moores Limited, uh, and that seems to have worked in cooperation with the Protein Fraction, Fractionation Laboratory in Oxford under Dr. Biggs. The references there are IPSN 40167 underscore 004, IPSN 5089 underscore 001. In 1975, Spaywood registered the trade name Hi8. The reference for that is IPSN 5089 underscore 001. There's evidence from various documents that show some financial support, albeit a, a limited level, from both the Haemophilia Society and the Department of Industry during the 1970s for the development of that product. Professor Bloom wrote an article in 1978 in the British Journal of Haematology, volume 40, pages 21 to 27, which referred, among other matters, to the use of porcine products in patients with factor VIII inhibitors. Uh, he said, and I quote, this material, however, causes thrombocytopenia, is also expensive, and may increase the immunological response. It is rarely, if ever, needed. The reference for that, sir, is SHPL four zeros. 108 underscore 034. Now, when writing this section of his article, Professor Bloom referred to Spaywood as a provider of porcine factor eight, but it's not clear whether or not his comments are specifically related to the Spaywood product or are a, a more general comment on the view of porcine factor eight at that time, 1978. And you may recall, sir, that on Friday, Ms. Middleton referred to the traditional view of, of porcine factor eight as having a very bad reputation because of all of these complications with it. And she, she mentioned thrombocytopenia, which is the below platelet count, but was particularly connected with it. And the, the risk of a response creating inhibitors, rendering a patient who is already difficult to treat even more difficult to treat. That article was written before Spaywood concluded a license agreement with Monsanto. Uh, that happened, we think, in 1979, and it was the license agreement for the use of polyelectrolyte technology. Uh, the reference is IPSN 40134-001. We heard from Ms. Middleton what polyelectrolyte technology involved, and it was used both for the porcine product and for the human product. And indeed, it seems to have been more successful in terms of the, the porcine product, uh, and more successful in separating the factor eight molecule from other molecules within the pig plasma. By the 7th of December 1979, HI8C was, according to a letter fr to Professor Bloom, ready for clinical use um, following extensive animal trials. It doesn't appear that a clinical trial certificate was obtained at this time, and its use was restricted to response to medical emergencies. So it would have been on a, a named patient basis and only in extremis. 
references are of the, the reference is IPSN four zero three three four underscore zero zero one and a further reference of IPSN four zero three two four underscore zero one one. That's the 7th of December 1979, saying that it's ready for use. The first usage appears to have come in June 1980. And if we could have on screen, please, Shumik, IPSN 40331 underscore 001. This is a letter to Dr. Aaron Stam at True Law dated the 30th of July, 1980. We looked at it, I think, on Friday in another context, but I'm just going to concentrate now on the, the porcine element. Um, the letter is from Mr. Williams, the marketing director. He wrote, in respect of porcine uh, factor eight, the first successful result of our research program, this is the second paragraph, sorry, the first successful result of our research program is the availability of a preparation of porcine factor 8C, high 8C, for the treatment of inhibitor patients. This product has now been used for the first time in man. We are delighted to report that the treat treatment in a life-threatening situation was entirely problem three. Thrombocytopenia was completely absent. There was no antigenic reactions. It would, therefore, appear that the criteria for use of porcine material can be relaxed. The points that I take from this letter, sir, are this. Firstly, that this is a reference to a, a new generation of porcine material using the polyelectrolyte fractionation. Second, that it has led to a product of increased purity. And third, that the first use had shown that the thrombocytopenia that had previously been such a concern about the use of, of porcine factor eight wasn't present in that patient and indeed that there were no antigenic reactions. So a, an optimistic report of a first use. The reference to the criteria for the use of porcine material being relaxed, as I understand it, is a reference to the fact that the previous stipulation that this should only be used in life-threatening emergencies could perhaps now be relaxed and it could be used with other patients. Uh, there is no clinical trial certificate, there is no product license, so it would have to have been used on a named patient basis. There does appear to have been some additional use of the product, because by October, we can see that there have been more than 60 uses. We have IPSN 40338 underscore 001 please, Shumik. This is a, a letter to Dr. Evans at the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, dated the 31st of October, 1980, again from Mr. Williams. Um, we looked at this letter before about the section dealing with human aid and the fact that uh, Dr. Williams is telling Dr. Evans that it's actually co but he asks him to keep that information confidential. And if we go to the, uh, the fourth substantive paragraph, starting incidentally, Mr. Williams wrote this. Incidentally, we have now had considerable success with our new porcine factor 8C preparation, Hyatt C. It appears that we have completely removed the thrombocytopenia activity and that other clinical side effects are minimal. In over 60 transfusions, we have seen around five minor shivering episodes, which can be ad adequately covered with hydrocortisone and pyritin. The thing which we did not expect is that Hyatt C in, I'm afraid that's, I, I can't quite decipher that, in something cases so far has not resulted in a rise in the I, I think it, uh, it's probably something typed over, but it looks like all the with the something underlying it. I, I think that's right, sir. Yes, it's typed over. In, in, uh, so it's the thing we did not expect is that Hyatt C, in all the cases so far, has not resulted in a rise in the pig antibody levels, even several weeks post-treatment. Two of the cases treated have received multiple injections at varying intervals for different bleeding episodes. 
in no case has there been a problem, even in the most desperate life-threatening circumstances. If you have an inhibitor problem, I will be very grateful if you can consider using this material. So we can see there the report on, from Mr. Williams' perspective on over 60 uses by October. I note uh, the uh, prohibition that was in place at the time on advertising <coughs> products which did not have a product license. The use of HIHC uh, attracted comment in the, the medical literature from the 24th of January 1981. Could we have on screen, please, IPSN? 605 underscore 023. This is the first reference to high 8 c that I have found, at least in the, in the medical literature. We can see, if we could expand the page, please, Shumik. Um, this is from the British Medical Journal, volume 282, 24th of January 1981. The report comes from Dr. Main and Drs. Madden, Crowbers, and Inglis uh, from Belfast. Uh, the, it is a, a letter, uh, and it refers to the highly purified porcine factor rate in haemophilia A with, uh, uh, with inhibitors to factor. Sorry. Highly purified porcine factor rate in haemophilia A with inhibitors to factor 8. So it's specifically referring to the use of this product in inhibitor patients. Uh, the start of the letter refers to the, the difficulties in treating such patients. And in the last sentence of the first paragraph, uh, the authors say, therefore, we would like to report our experience with a new compound, compound highly purified porcine factor rate, HI8 Spaywood. A 16-year-old boy was admitted with hemoarthrosis in his right elbow and right knee. He'd been diagnosed as having haemophilia A six months after birth, with a factor 8C level of less than one... Um, I'm, I'm afraid I, I can't decipher that. But it, um, ten years uh, later... one percent. Is it one percent? Uh, ten years later, an inhibitor to factor 8 was detected. After that bleeding episode... Uh, after that, bleeding episodes were treated with fibre, uh, immunolimited, or factor nine concentrates from Oxford. His new inhibitor varied from 2.0 to 78 RB units, new Oxford. On this occasion, his hemorrhosis uh, hemarthrosis was treated with factor nine concentrates and subsided. However, he then had a melena and subsequently passed frank blood per rectum. A total of 2,720 units of factor IX concentrate were given, but despite this, he continued to bleed. We then decided to change to HI8. This was given as an infusion of 2,200 units over six hours. Um, this was continued for 36 hours, and a total of 13,200 units were given. There was a very satisfactory rise in factor VIII levels. Um, there's reference to a table that is contained in the article and his bleeding came under rapid control. Uh, there was a, a modest rise in human factor VIII antibody noted, uh, but porcine factor VIII antibodies failed to develop. The final paragraph. Previous attempts at treating haemophilia A with porcine factor VIII were abandoned because of allergic reactions and because the presence of platelets aggregating factor caused thrombocytopenia. Neither was a problem in this patient. Therefore, we conclude that highly purified porcine factor eight, high eight, is of value in treating haemophilia, uh, in, in treating haemophiliacs who have developed antibodies to factor eight. So, an optimistic, um, sorry, not optimistic, but a, a, a positive report on high eight C from Dr. Main in January 1981, specifically referring to the importance of the, the fact that the purified product didn't seem to do what the old product, product did in terms of uh, low platelet counts and in terms of uh, creating uh, inhibitors in the patient. There is some evidence uh, there, uh, from within Spaywood 
that by January 1981, considerable optimism was being shown, considerable ambition uh, about the prospects of this product. If we could have, please, uh, IPSN 40260 underscore 010. This is a, a handwritten document. We don't know who the author is. Uh, it's headed Monsanto. Um, it's recovered from the Spaywood files. What the author wrote is this. I am now reasonably confident that porcine factor eight can completely replace the need for human factor eight preparations. A timetable for such an operation is complex and difficult to predict. However, a product license in the UK should be feasible within three years. USA within five years. Third world countries could supply an almost immediate market and sales without a license to inhibitor patients could be very substantial. To protect our interests, we must ensure that the polyelectrolyte patents are strengthened and policed properly. The polymers must not get into the hands of our competitors. Monsanto's, Monsanto can and must provide this protection, including registration of new pa uh, patients. Patents. Patents, sorry. Uh, it, in the end... Uh, anticipated agreement with Monsanto, we must try and establish the right to sell animal factor 8C worldwide in perpetuity at a five-year lead time before Monsanto can manufacture uh, animal factor 8C itself. So we can tell from that that this is a, 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 an internal Spaywood document. The reference to uh, porcine factor 8 re completely replacing human factor 8 is made as of January 1981. Uh, but with the, you may feel, significant caveat that the uh, timetable is complex and difficult to predict. In the medical literature, there was a, a little uh, more circumspection. Could we have, please, IPSN 705 underscore 024, please, Schumann? Um, this is a, uh, a case report from the British Medical Journal uh, from date of the 20th of June, 1981. Uh, and it is from uh, the Department of Hematology for Glasgow Royal Infirmary. It's Drs. Erskine and Davidson. Uh, the case report deals with a severe anaphylactic reaction after the use of high 8 c in a patient. The case details are, are given. I, I won't go through them. Uh, I will just turn to the comment, which is use of porcine factor 8 concentrates has previously been severely restricted because of allergic rea reactions and thrombocytopenia. HIHC is a highly purified preparation of porcine factor 8C, it's factor 8, but contains only trace amounts of non-factor 8 protein, thus reducing side effects. Unfortunately, the severe reaction after its use in our patient suggests that, as with other porcine products, allergic reactions that might limit the useful, its usefulness may occur. A small test dose should therefore be administered before infusion of therapeutic doses to identify more clearly patients who might be at risk of developing such problems. And then if we could go to page two, please. This is a, um, a letter in response to that from Drs. Kernoff and Tuttenham uh, from the Royal Free. They say uh, in the second paragraph, there is no doubt that polyelectrolyte fractionation of porcine factor eight, Hyatt, should be used with caution, but transfusion reactions severe enough to necessitate stopping therapy are unusual. Over the last year, we have given 34 courses of PE porcine eight therapy to eight patients with circulating antibodies to factor eight. Of a total of 246 infusions, only one was followed by a reaction judged sufficiently severe to justify stopping treatment. The reactions of lesser degrees of severity are relatively common. 
27 infusions were followed by some significant reaction, and 21 courses of therapy were complicated by at least one. Uh, reactions were generally short-lived, well-tolerated by patients, and did not give rise to serious clinical concern. If we could go down, please, to the uh, penultimate paragraph, beginning bleeding in patients. Thank you. Bleeding in patients with anti-8, uh, that's anti-factor 8, is often severe and difficult to control, uh, and risks of therapy must be weighed against likely benefits. We have found PE porcine 8 to be highly effective in stopping major bleeding, which has failed to respond to human factor 8. It has also been used successfully to cover elective surgery. The material lacks several of the disadvantages of earlier or alternative preparations, and we believe its introduction to be a real therapeutic advance. Porcine heparin and insulin, given intravenously, are rarely complicated by transfusion reactions, and one is optimistic that the problems with polyelectrolyte porcine 8 can be similarly resolved. Meanwhile, we suggest that the material should be used only in major haemophilia centres where adequate facilities and expertise are available for stringent monitoring. In particular, we would urge that no surgical procedure should be undertaken without a full preoperative assessment of the characteristics of the patient's anti-factor 8. Dr. Kernoff and Dr. Tuddenham there responding to the, the letter which had cast uh, some doubt on high hc by giving their more positive experiences. We looked on Friday at Dr. Tuttenham's Toronto lecture from 1981. If we could have that on screen, please. IPSN 40156 underscore 101. Go to the fourth page of this, please. On, on Friday, we were concentrating on the, uh, what Dr. Tuttenham has said about human factor rate. In respect of porcine factor rate, he, says, he, he said this. Porcine factor rate is, of course, used for treatment of inhibitor patients. Thrombocytopenia has been virtually eliminated as a side effect. and Other adverse reactions are much less severe than with previous animal preparations. Haemophilia centres which have used high hc report dramatic improvements in the lifestyle and morale of their inhibitor patients. The possibility of porcine factor 8c being used for non-inhibitor patients in countries with a shortfall of human factor 8 should now be seriously considered. Of course, viral hepatitis is not present in porcine plasma, and the product thus presents no risk of infection. In here, uh, uh, Professor Tuddenham gave evidence to this inquiry in, uh, on the 22nd of October last year. Um, I, I won't take you to that, sir, but he does comment on this at pages 54 to 55 of that evidence. Uh, he, he said that he was thinking primarily about countries in the developing world when he was saying that. Um, but we can see that, again, the, the prospect of high HC, porcine factor 8, being used in non-inhibitor patients is being considered. Can we have on screen, please, IPSN 705 underscore 024, please, Shumik. Can we have page three of this document? Give me, sir. Um, a, a further piece from the letter from the, the medical journals. This is from the Lancet, dated the 27th of March, 1982, so a, a little later in time. Um, it is from uh, Drs. Hewitt, Mackey, and Mackin at the 
uh, Middlesex Hospital. In the first paragraph, they say, the management of patients with haemophilia A who have an inhibitor to factor HC, especially those who have previously had a classical uh, an amnestic antibody response after infusion of human factor VIII remains problematical. Excellent clinical responses have been reported with polyelectrolyte fractionated, highly purified porcine factor VIII concentrate high HC. Most important has been the low incidence of any appreciable rise in anti-human or anti-porcine inhibitor levels despite prolonged therapy. We wish to report the use of this material in an inhibitor patient who responded at first but subsequently had a marked increase in an anti-human inhibitor and acquired a significant anti-porcine inhibitor with severe clinical bleeding unresponsive to highly purified por porcine factor eight. The, the details are given. I won't go through those. Um, if we could go to the penultimate paragraph, please, beginning although. Although hemostasis was at first well controlled, the infusions of porcine factor VIII stimulated a brisk rise in an anti-human inhibitor, followed by the rapid appearance of a discrete anti-porcine inhibitor. A subsequent infusion of porcine factor VIII failed to control bleeding, and there was no rise in factor VIII-C level. Individual haemophiliac patients with inhibitors vary considerably in their clinical and immunological response to the various therapeutic materials available. In particular, any new material should be carefully assessed in each inhibitor patient. In contrast to the previous reports, we observed a marked uh, anamnesic response when purified porcine factor... I think it's anamnestic. Anamnestic, sorry. Uh, when purified porcine factor VIII was infused alone. This prohibited further effective therapy with this material when secondary hemorrhage occurred. So a concern raised there about the development of a an immune response to the porcine factor rate and indeed to human factor rate, which renders the patient still harder to treat. Then if we could have page four of that document, please, Shumik. A further report, this from... Uh, from Bohemistas of Stuttgart, volume 48, edition to page 238 from 1982. Uh, the, the letter is entitled Immune Response Induced by Porcine Factor 8 in Severe Haemophiliacs with Antibody to Factor 8. Uh, and it is um, from F. Verust uh, and J.P. Alain of the CNTS in France. Um, I, I won't go through the entire, uh, the entire document, so, but it is another example of a patient who, having used high HC, uh, had an a, um, a, a, a immune response to it. Um, if we look at the, just the final paragraph, Uh, it states, in our experience, as already mentioned by Kernoff and Tuddenham, porcine factor rate has been clinically effective and minimal uh, adverse reactions were observed. However, we have consistently observed a significant rise of the antibody titer, which does not allow uh, to use high HC for trivial hemorrhages, but combines its use to life-threatening bleeding episodes. So a concern that there is a, a rise in inhibitor levels which means that the product should only be used uh, in extremis. If we could also go, please, to BPLL 0016008 underscore 034. This is a document that we looked at on Friday in the context of human factor eight. It is Dr. Jim Smith's uh, internal memo for BPL about a Spayward meeting at Uberlingen uh, on the 24th of April, 1982. Uh, as we know, Dr. Smith was no fan of Spayward. 
he said that the meeting was intended to pre uh, present the merits of porcine factor VIII to influential German clinicians. Um, and this is what he records of the meeting uh, in respect of porcine factor eight, and indeed factor nine. Um, he says, quotes, only a few hundred treatments have been given, more than half by the royal three, and many of those in one patient. Most clinicians would still give human eight to low responders and possibly to high responders with a modest current titer. Some would use porcine eight or FIBA almost as a first resort in high responders, especially if an important organ were threatened. One clinician had a patient on home therapy with porcine 8, which must be as courageous, or foolhardy, as home therapy on fibre. It was evident that, especially on the continent, there was a lot of me too among the less conservative clinicians, and also a great deal of patient pressure for whatever is new and preferably expensive. Most patients were said to get unwanted reactions at one time or another. The incidence of severe side effects seemed to be about 5%, only one frank case of a very severe thrombocytopenia had been seen, as one would expect from the low PAF 8RAG content. However, they hoped to reduce the PAF content a further tenfold by chromatography. At least one serious reaction in clinical failure was attributed to early exposure to the old porcine concentrate. Most of the other reactions, pyrexia, bronchospasm, etc., seem to be classified as alarming when first seen but manageable, for example, with adrenaline and steroids. Some clinicians gave such cover routinely along with the concentrate. This left an impression of a determination to try porcine 8 in a range of patients rather than to think clearly about optimal treatment for each individual. The other problem is that antibodies to either porcine or human 8 or both tend to develop, although not always at the same titer or at the same time as would be expected after human aid. Casper, I take that to be a reference to Dr. Casper, and we'll come back to her, thought there might be merit in treating mild haemophiliacs with porcine 8 to avoid the risk of transmitting hepatitis, but there seemed to be a consensus that this might risk production of cross-reacting antibodies. So we can see from both Dr. Smith's report and from some of the medical literature that there is concern in 1982 about some of the side effects of using high hc despite the early optimism. As of September 1982, the only formal trial of high hc was taking place uh, in the United States The product was being used in the UK on a named patient basis and had been since June 1980, as we've seen. The reference for that is IPSN 40398. On the 21st of October 1982, Mr. Williams wrote to Mr. Slogham of the DHSS about the regulatory position, and he expressed his intention to go for a full product license for high hc as opposed to a, cl a clinical trial certificate. And you will remember, sir, that the uh, opposite approach was being taken for human factor rate and the, that a, an application for a clinical trial certificate for that product was put in. The reference of that, IPSN 40277. We saw on Friday uh, a letter from Mr. Heath to Mr. Seymour of the 26th of November 1982 in which Mr. Heath said that he had been advised by Mr. Fowler of the DHSS that they were doing, and I quote, entirely the right thing in going for a full product license for high hc The reference to that is IPSN 40230. Can we have on the screen, please? Actually, uh, I won't put it up, but the Hyatt Marketing Plan for 1983, a document that we looked at on Friday, IPSN uh, 5025, uh, set out uh, an objective of a sales target of £1.32 million uh, and capitalisation on probable regulatory approval in the UK in respect of Hyatt C. Uh, and it was said that the market segment most access, uh, accessible to Hyatt C 
was, quotes, the high responder haemophilia A inhibitor market, which comprised about 1,688 patients in Western Europe, the USA, and Japan. The value of that market, sorry, not, uh, I, I'm not, the, that figure is incorrect, so forgive me. So it's um, the inhibitor market in Western, European, Western Europe, USA, and Japan uh, was valued at a total of 16.88 million pounds uh, based on various calculations that were, were contained in the, uh, in the business plan. The same document records that in the UK the product was not licensed but was being used as a first line of treatment at the Royal Free and at Belfast. And it was also being used as a, an alternate treatment in a further six centres. If we could have on screen, please, Schumick, IPSN 40264. This is a letter uh, from Mr. Williams, dated the 16th of February, 1983. While the business plan had stressed the inhibitor market, Mr. Williams, as we will see here, um, has a, some wider thoughts about the expansion of a product to non-inhibitor patients as well. But what he wrote is this. During all the conversations which I had with various clinicians in the past few weeks, the possibility of using porcine factor 8C for the treatment of non-inhibitor patients has been a major topic. In particular, Peter Kernoff and Margaret Hillgartner Cornell University in New York, are most interested, and I expect that one or other of them, hopefully both, will use the product for such a patient within the next few weeks. There are two prime indications. One, mild haemophiliacs, whose only normal exposure to human uh, factor eight is as cover for surgical procedures. They can thus be given serious liver problems from a single exposure. I take that to be a reference to the risk of transmission of hepatitis. Two, the growing body of patients who are refusing treatment with commercial factor VIII concentrates because of the AIDS risk. Subject to availability, they can obviously be treated with single donor cryo for simple bleeds. However, when they have a major bleed or require surgery, there will inevitably be, and this is overwritten again, um, I, I think it's something... It looks like dose volume. Dose volume problem. But the, the, the context suggests that the concern is that there is a, a risk of viral transmission of the product, uh, 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 viral transmission when using human factor eight, which wouldn't be there if using porcine factor eight. Back to the letter. All this places even greater importance on our program for further purification of high HC. I feel strongly that this should receive our major research effort during the next few months and would like to see a very tightly controlled program with materials available for trial by the end of the summer. There is no doubt that other companies in our field will also be looking at animal factor eight. I know that some of them have expertise already available and we could very soon have a major competitor. That is Mr. Williams' letter to Mr. Mottram, copied to Mr. Heath, so an internal Spaywood document, 16th of February, 1983. And as we saw on Friday, so this is just before Spaywood entered into a, a period of uh, some corporate changes at the top of the company, with Mr. Heath and Mr. Williams, in effect, losing out to uh, the investor's choice of executives and directors. Correspondence from that same month, February 1983, showed some interest in Japan and the United States about the possible use of high hc on non-inhibitor patients. The references are IPSN 40386 and IPSN 40224. Despite that interest, as we will see shortly, when an application for a product license was made, it was made specifically for the treatment of inhibitor patients. 
the, that application was made on the 29th of November, 1983. I, I note, sir, that um, the product will have been used for nearly three and a half years on a named patient basis at that stage. And, and it, uh, am I right in thinking it had never actually had a clinical trial as such? Uh, it, had ha it, it had never had a clinical trial certificate. It had been used in patients and reports had been given, but it hadn't, uh, as, as far as I'm aware, it was not subject to a, a formal clinical trial. So there had been no controlled trial, no drugs trial? N no, um, and there is some uh, correspondence about this where Spey would point out that it was, it's very difficult to establish such a trial because there are, A, a very limited number of patients who might use the product, and, B, it was very difficult to establish what a controlled product should be because there was no equivalent product to porcine factor VIII. Um, there was a, 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 a ethical issues, I think, about uh, trying to establish such a trial. There had, however, been no application for a product license, despite the product being used for nearly three and a half years. Uh, the license um, was eventually granted on the 3rd of December, 1984. The references for that are IPSN 40477 and MHRA 20333477 underscore 011. It's helpful, I think, to, to look at some of the documentation about the product license application. If we could have on screen, please, IPSN 607 underscore 001. You can see from the front page that this is the Spaywood application for a product license. If we could go to page three, please, Schumick. This is the uh, part four of that, which is for studies in humans. Um, on page three, we can see that the name of a product is Hyatt C, but it, the application is being sought by Spaywood Laboratories Limited. The Wrexham address is given. If we could go to the bottom of the page, please. The date is 29th of November 1983, and it's signed by Mr. Wayne, who was a director at that time. Could we then turn to page five, please? Uh, section four, uses. It is said, Hyatt C is intended for the treatment or prevention of bleeding in patients with haemophilia A who have inhibitors to factor 8C. So very expressly stated to be for the use of inhibitor patients. That was also stated in the covering letter, which I need not take you to, but the reference is MHRA 0033477 underscore 003. We could go to the bottom of that page, please. There is perhaps some explanation as to why. Uh, contraindications, precautions and warnings. There are no known contraindications to high HC. Infusion reactions. Despite its very low protein content, high HC may on occasion give rise to reactions such as fever, chills, headache, nausea, vomiting, and skin rashes. Such reactions are more common after the first infusion of a course of treatment and tend to lessen in frequency and severity as further infusions are given. Hydrocortisone and or antihistamine may alleviate these effects and may be prescribed as a precautionary measure. Over the page, please. Immune response to high HC. In some patients, treatment with high HC is followed by a rise in levels of inhibitor to both human and porcine factor HC. Inhibitor levels to both porcine and human factor HC should therefore be determined at regular intervals after treatment. Effects on the platelet count. A significant fall in the patient's platelet count has only very rarely been reported after infusion of high HC. However, regular monitoring of the platelet count during the treatment period is recommended. Then caution, in capital letters, adrenaline, hydrocortisone, and facilities for resuscitation should be immediately available for the treatment of acute infusion reactions. Um, 
page 17, please, Shimik. If we go to the third paragraph down there, HIHC has been used. Thank you. HIHC has been used clinically in the United Kingdom, Italy, France, Sweden, and the USA for the emergency treatment or prevention of bleeding episodes in inhibitor patients in whom no other form of treatment had proved effective. The product was used on a named patient basis in all countries except the USA, where an IND is held for high uh, HC. That is a, a, the equivalent, uh, as I understand it, of a clinical trial certificate in the UK. So there, there was a trial being done in the United States. The effectiveness of high HC and its side effects were monitored as part of a normal course of treatment, and these results are presented in this section. Although the advantages of comparative clinical trials are well appreciated, it was not considered feasible to carry out such a study on high HC for the following reasons. And this is the point that I was raising earlier, so possible comparative forms of treatment. Um, and I, what it says in, in this paragraph is, the concentrates of clotting factors commonly used in the treatment of inhibitor patients are human HC, non-activated uh, prothrombin complex concentrates, and activated prothrombin complex concentrates. The rationale for the latter two forms of treatment is not clearly understood, and their effectiveness cannot be assessed by objective laboratory methods and has thus not yet been fully evaluated. In addition, the activated prothrombin complex concentrates are not licensed in the UK. Human factor 8C would therefore seem to be the most suitable choice of comparative treatment. And we go on. It seems indisputable that human HC should be the treatment of choice for those patients who respond favorably and do not show significant increases in inhibitor titer as a result of treatment. However, the patients for whom high HC is the most be beneficial are frequently those for whom hu uh, human HC either is ineffective at practical dose levels or produces an undesirably high anamnestic response in antibody titer. Thus, if patients are selected for treatment with high HC on the basis of their unsuitability for treatment with human HC, this negates the rationale for a comparative study of the two concentrates. So you can see there so why it is that they felt it was difficult or indeed impossible to establish a, an effective trial with a, a controlled product. Uh, I draw your attention so to the first line of, of that sentence in light of the discussion that there had been about the possibility of using high hc for non-inhibitor patients. Uh, I read it again in quotes, it seems indisputable that human HC should be the treatment of choice for those patients who respond favorably and do not show significant increases in inhibitor titer as a result of treatment. So in the product license application for high hc there is an acceptance that human factor eight is the, uh, the product of choice for non-inhibitor patients. And as we have seen in the, the list of potential uh, side effects, you can understand why the, that view was, was taken at that time. Uh, at page 19 of this document, there is a, a, a list of the um, 144 treatment episodes uh, that have been reported. I won't go through that, sir, but we can see the, uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the number of reactions, uh, a small number, but um, listed and, and set out in the application. And if we go to page 20, please, for conclusions. And it says this, in the management of uh, hemorrhagic disorders, prompt and effective treatment is vital any delay may lead to irreversible damage to the patient. Most haemophiliacs with inhibitors live with the constant fear that a major hemorrhage may prove unresponsive to conventional therapy and may lead to death or permanent disablement. Even minor he hemorrhages may lead to hospitalization and surgery of any kind is hazardous, if not impossible. High HC has indisputably proved life-saving in a number of cases and offers certain patients the opportunity of resuming a comparatively normal lifestyle. Under those circumstances, the small degree of risk related to the possible side effects of a product is thought to be amply justified. That is the case made for high HC, but it is made in respect of inhibitor patients only. Uh, 
submitted as part of that application is uh, an article by Drs. Kernoff, uh, Thomas, Lilly, Matthews, Goldman, and Tottenham from the Royal Free. It's IPSN 605 underscore 007. The paper is entitled Clinical Experience with Polyelectrolyte Fractionated Porcine Factor 8 Concentrate in the Treatment of Haemophiliacs with Antibodies to Factor 8. And you will remember, sir, that Royal Free, and, and particularly Drs. Kernoff and Tuttenham, were two of the supporters, if I may put it that way, of high hc two of the more enthusiastic clinicians. Um, if we could go to page two of the document, please, Schumick. Just to pick up in the second sentence, that over a 18-month period, eight patients with factor eight inhibitors were treated with 45 courses, 297 infusions of polyelectrolyte fractionated porcine factor eight. So that's high HC. Um, then um, the document goes on to uh, record the observations. On those patients, I won't go through uh, all of it. Um, if we could turn to page 18, please, the discussion section. Again, I will summarise this rather than reading from it. Uh, the authors found porcine uh, factor eight to be an effective treatment. They developed a strategy whereby patients with low inhibitor levels were usually treated with human factor eight. Those with intermediate levels were generally treated with porcine factor eight, by which they meant high HC, uh, and generally had an excellent clinical response to the product. And then over onto the next page, please. Well, if we, if we go down just five, five lines there, the relatively high risk. The relatively high risk of adverse effects is acceptable only because of the inherently serious nature of the disorder, of a lack of reliably, uh, of reliably effective alternatives. Yes. Uh, the final stage of the uh, strategy is that uh, they found that poor sign factor rate was uh, um, uh, of limited, or their, their impression was that it was of limited effect in patients with high levels of inhibitors, um, although they had very few such patients. Um, if we could go over, please, to page 20. Um, I think this captures the the essence of the report uh, the, from the paragraph starting although. It says, although porcine 8 is an obviously much improved version of a conventionally fractionated product, we have encountered all the problems of the older material, albeit infrequently and or in mild form. Of most concern has been the occurrence of infusion reactions which, because of their typical clinical characteristics, seem most likely to be caused by contaminating pyrogens or endotoxin, rather than by porcine protein per se. We have only once encountered a reaction which was sufficiently severe to necessitate stopping treatment, and our general impression is that the problem has lessened markedly over the years. Over the last year? Uh, over the last year, sorry. Perhaps because improvements have now been made in blood collection and fractionation procedures. While it seems likely that this problem may be resolved in the near future, the fact that major reactions have also been seen elsewhere leads us to recommend that PE porcine 8 should not, at present, be used outside major haemophilia centres where adequate facilities and expertise are available for stringent monitoring. In our view, the product is not yet suitable for use in home treatment programmes. Over to the next page, please. A principal disadvantage of conventionally fractionated porcine 8, a restriction in number and duration of courses of treatment which could be given to individual patients, seem to have been largely overcome. In some patients, it seems likely that repeated infusions of porcine 8 over a long period may provoke changes in anti-8 specificity, which might diminish the advantage of a porcine product. Whether this will prove to be a clinical problem will only be known by longer follow-up. So a concern there is uh, that not all of the consequences are known at that time. 
Um, if we could go over to the final page, please. The final two sentences of this report. It will also be important to obtain evidence on the potential advantages of a material, the possible reduced or absent risk of transmission of human hepatitis viruses. It seems beyond doubt that use of porcine 8 to treat patients with inhibitors should result in conservation of human blood product resources. So some advantages to the product, sir, that uh, it's fair to say that Drs. Kernoff and Tuttenham were clear that at that stage in its development, its use should be restricted to major haemophilia centres because of the adverse risks associated with it. The um, Committee on the Safety of Medicine considered the application on the 22nd and 23rd of March 1984. I won't take you to it, but the reference is MHRA 0033475 underscore 018. Uh, there were also reports from the Subcommittee on the Safety, Efficacy and Adverse Reactions and on the uh, Biological uh, Subcommittee. References are MHRA 0033476 underscore zero zero nine. Uh, the CSM uh, supported the uh, or advised uh, the granting of the license subject to further information being provided. It seems to have taken some time before that information was provided and the license was eventually granted in December 1984. Um, an internal document from Spaywood, uh, IPSN 40378 underscore 001. This is a, a memorandum from Mr. Mottram to the Chairman and Managing Director uh, at, of Porton International. It's dated July 1984. Um, so in the period between the application and the granting of the licence. This is at a time when the, uh, the, the new management of Spaywood has taken over. Uh, and if we could have a look at the second page, please, we'll see what Mr Mottram says uh, about price, uh, the price of a product. Um, he says that 18 months ago, Hyatt C was priced at 18, 16 pence per unit to UK and European hospitals. The previous management considered that a low price in comparison with the two competitive uh, products, Fever and Autoplex, was appropriate. This policy was a disaster. When distributors are employed, then any price to hospitals has to be discounted by 30 to 50 percent to arrive at the net return to Spaywood. The company's operating expenses with the utmost economy are unlikely to be less than £150,000 per month. It follows, therefore, that a 16 uh, pence list price involves less than 10 pence net return a monthly sales performance in excess of 1.5 million units is necessary to achieve break-even. So a criticism there of the previous pricing policy. And if we could go down a couple of paragraphs. It says, for Spaywood to be profitable, Hyatt C must have a USA list price of over 60 cents per unit and a European list price of 40 pence or more. I won't go through the rest of this document, so that we can see there the, the concerns that the new management had about the approach of the old management. IS, uh, IPSN uh, 5036 underscore 012, please, assume it. This is another Spaywood document, uh, which goes through the current approaches to the treatment of inhibitor patients in the UK on a centre-by-centre -centre basis. Um, it notes that out of a total, it, this is based on, on 1983, the document is uh, dated the 2nd of November 1984. Um, we can see that on the bottom left-hand corner of that page, please, Schumann. 
uh, and it says that in 1983, uh, there were um, 273 inhibitor patients out of a total of 4,716 patients. Um, I won't go through uh, each of the centres, um, but it is fair to say that in respect of many of them, um, a consideration that was uh, expressed to the Spaywood representatives was the cost of the product. Uh, if we could turn, please, to page nine. It's something of a, a concluding section. Comments on the future potential for HIHC. It says this. All of the reference centre directors were of the opinion that HIHC is of value in treating high responder inhibitor patients. And that if the inhibitor cross-reactivity is favourable, it should be the treatment of choice for severe bleeds or surgery. No one expressed any serious worries about adverse reactions, although potential immuno immunogenicity i.e. provocation of an, an amnestic response, was thought by most to be an important consideration in treating minor bleeds. Most centres thought that cost was the most significant factor in deciding which product to use for a mild bleed, efficacy and cost when deciding for a severe bleed. The cost of using porcine factor 8 relative to using high-dose human factor 8 was frequently mentioned, porcine being approximately four times the price of human as was the cost relative to FIBA, which is currently 20 pence per unit. Several centres would like to have Hyatt C in stock on a sale or return basis and feel that in that case, they would be more likely to use it in an emergency. Um, I will leave the, that document there, sir, but we can see the significance of cost in uh, the, the market penetration of Hyatt C. One further point, um, which goes to the question of why HIHC wasn't used more widely in non-inhibitor patients, is that the 1986 Baywood marketing plan records that it had to be stored at minus 15 degrees Celsius, which obviously contrasted with storage at, at 4 degrees Celsius and the fridge for a, a factor concentrate. Uh, minus 15 would obviously require a... a Freezer. The reference of that is IPSN 40580 underscore 001. The company, um, Spaywood and, and Portum, which took it over, had some success in marketing IHC internationally. Product licenses were obtained in Canada and the United States in 1986, IPSN 40477. Uh, and uh, there was marketing in France and Germany as well, uh, IPSN 40420. Uh, the, the marketing efforts involved an emphasis on viral safety of the product. The references for that are IPSN 40133 underscore 002 and IPSN 40148 underscore 012. Just to close uh, this section so with, with two further observations um, if we could have IPSN 5073 underscore 001 on the screen please this is an article by uh, an American haemophilia doctor Dr. Carol Casper um, you'll recall that she was mentioned in the 1982 meeting in Germany in, in Dr. Smith's note. Uh, this is an article in Haemophilia Notes, a publication by the U.S. National uh, Haemophilia Found, uh, Federation. Um, I, I won't go through the entire document. It's about porcine factor eight, as we can see from the title. Uh, if we could just look at the last two paragraphs beginning porcine factor 8 has not been known I should say so this is dated spring 1987 
what Dr. Casper wrote is this. Porcine factor eight has not been known to transmit hepatitis or human immunodeficiency virus. Pigs are raised in isolated herds in rural England. Thus, the concentrate has been especially appropriate for persons not yet exposed to hepatitis or HIV, such as patients who don't have congenital haemophilia, uh, but have developed an antibody to factor VIII as an autoimmune disorder. Another advantage of porcine factor VIII is that some patients with haemophilia and, and inhibitors don't show as much stimu uh, stimulation of the inhibitor level after porcine concentrate use as they do after human concentrate use. A few such patients in England have used the porcine concentrate routinely for hemorrhages for years without any rise in inhibitor level. Most persons who are treated intensively with porcine concentrate, for example for critical hemorrhages or for surgery, develop increased levels of inhibitor to both porcine and human factor VIII, and the level of inhibitor to porcine factor VIII may get as high as that to human factor VIII. We welcome porcine factor VIII concentrate as one more option in our array of methods of managing inhibitors. An article by Dr. Casper from 1989 in the publication Progress in Hemostasis and Thrombosis, volume 9, pages 57 to 86, entitled Treatment of Factor VIII Inhibitors, uh, recorded that, and I quote, there have been no reports of transmission of blood-borne infections with porcine factor VIII concentrate. Therefore, it has been popular for use in patients not previously exposed to blood products, such as patients with autoantibodies. The reference of that is IPSN 5057 underscore 093. So we can see from those articles in 1987 and 1989 that porcine factor VIII had a good record on viral safety but it was, if I may put it this way, it, it was not seen as a, a magic bullet that could be used in all circumstances. There were side effects and there were risks to using it, particularly where it was used uh, in a, um, for treatment of, of critical hemorrhages because of the development of inhibitors. That, sir, is all I intend to say about porcine factor VIII, and indeed all I intend to say about Spaywood. Um, we will be turning to the final presentation, which is about a series of companies, Abbott, Alpha, and Griffles. Uh, and I, I want to sort of, if that might be best done after a break. Yes. We'll take a, a, a break then until uh, quarter to 12. Quarter to, quarter to 12. 